Download the template from My Design Library. To avoid costly mistakes, do a test cut and binder fitting on paper, ensuring proper alignment. Dyeing leather. Wear gloves to protect your fingers and nails from the dye color unless you love that kind of look. Using a sponge, apply the base coat in circular motion. Try not to inhale the fumes. Do this in a well-ventilated area. It should be dry to touch, leaving no dry traces on your finger. This could take a few minutes depending on room temperature. Apply a second coating depending on how dark you want the finish to be, this time using straight lines and let dry. To protect its finish, apply the seal. This is just to demonstrate the type of stroke I used. As you notice, it is added sheen to the piece. Let dry. Step 3. Cut the rest of the holes. You may absolutely opt to do this with your Cricut machine or cutting tool in step 1. But since leather may shrink a little after drying it, I decided to use a manual route. With buttonhole leather punchers, using these were so much fun. You may get them from local hardware or leather store. For more details and tools, visit my blog on the description below. Step 4. Assembly Using the rivet setter and a soft hammer, add the rivets and screws. Make sure to pound it on this side instead of the decorative side, as shown here. Add your button stud and its screw back like so. Now it's time to add the spine. The template I provided is specific to the six ring A5 metal spine. To attach, use the screws that came with it and a flathead screwdriver. Add your paper. And last but not the least, pause and admire your work. Note that the leather may be a little stiff soon after you've dyed it. But there are things that you can use out there such as leather conditioners to help with this. Mm -hmm.